Thursday, November 2nd, 2017. May I have the attendance, please? Mrs. Bealey? Here. Mrs. Blyford? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Ms. Perry? Shay? Here. Ms. Starr? Here. Mr. Vashon? Mr. Hinton? Here. Will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Okay. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? There are none. Okay. Look at us cruising right through. Do we have anyone here that would like to speak um, a public comment on any agenda items? Um, if you do want to speak, please come up to the podium, um, state your name and address, and you would have three minutes. Seeing none, I will close public comment. I have a big crowd tonight, so it's impressive. Thanks for coming, everybody. Um, take this right to 6.0, superintendent's report. All right, we're getting fancy with our presentations. Kelly's made us a slide deck, so as I rattle off numbers, you have a visual up there that you can look at. Um, and again, our enrollment, uh, the first part of my report is our enrollment update, um, and as always, our enrollment is available under the superintendent's page as well on the website. So this month, um, November 1st enrollment data is 957 at the high school, which is a decrease of three students. We're stable at the middle school with 716 students. One new student joined us at 676 for Wentworth. Uh, a new student joined us at Blue Point, so we're at 176. We have one less student at Eight Corners at 223 and Pleasant Hill is stable at 170. So our district enrollment is at 2,918 students this month. Um, and that is an overall decrease of two students from last month. I also just wanted to um, give you a little update on NEASC. So this is a big uh, accreditation visit that's coming up for our high school. And it starts on Sunday. There is um, a public uh, participation component to this on Sunday so there will be a panel presentation from 115 to 215 in the auditorium at the high school and that is open to the public um, and then there's also a welcoming reception for the NEAS committee that will take place from 420 to 520 um, on Sunday and then again on Wednesday from 2.10 to 2.30, um, there are some closing remarks that will take place in the auditorium at the high school where the public, again, is welcome to be a part of that. And then each day, Monday and Tuesday, and even in Wednesday morning, there's a very busy schedule where the committee will be meeting with um, smaller focus groups. They'll talk with high school leadership. They'll talk with teachers. They'll talk with students. Um, they'll talk with board members and district level leaders and also the administrators from the sending district. So we're really excited um, to show off our high school and we uh, look forward to the input. And I would just say a special thank you to um, the high school leadership, including the teacher leaders who have been chairing this work. Um, they have been working incredibly hard to um, participate in the self-study last year but also to prepare for the visit. Um, and it's really an, an, an opportunity for our community to share what's great about Scarborough. And so we do encourage the public to come to these portions where it's open um, and engage with the committee and also um, get to hear about the great things that are happening at Scarborough High School. And then the next um, item uh, under my report is the School and Business Partnership presentation. And we have Karen Martin from SEDCO here, along with our very own Director of Curriculum and Assessment, Monique Culbertson, uh, to talk with you about what's happening with the School Business Partnership. Good evening. Um, thank you for that introduction. Again, I'm Karen Martin. I'm with the Scarborough Economic Development Corporation. And for the last year, Monique and I have had the uh, pleasure of serving as co-chairs um, for this interesting committee that has come together that's been known as the Scarborough School Business Partnership. Uh, this committee really started as a way to organize a group of folks who are really interested in um, bringing the business community um, into the schools and looking for um, interesting learning opportunities for Scarborough students. 
And our group includes a wide variety of folks uh, from business organizations to uh, industry leaders in bioscience, um, in banking. Um, we've got uh, a lot of participation, obviously, from the school side as well and from uh, the University of New England actually uh, has participated in, in this as well. So there was a lot of people coming together um, to really think about um, how we discover some new opportunities for student learning. We all came with really, I think, a host of different ideas from, you know, how do we have guest lectures to internships to mentor programs um, and certainly uh, career exploration. And we all had this fundamental idea of pooling resources from um, all three opportunities, uh, pooling the resources to engage students um, in ideas outside the traditional classroom. Um, with nearly 1,400 businesses um, and 17,000 employees in this town, there's a lot of talent out there that I think we can reach out and tap into um, to really begin to uh, share knowledge with our students. So the next piece that we really needed to think about was, you know, as the group got excited, how did we um, really bring everybody together and start thinking about, you know, if you will, all rowing in the same direction since we all had different ideas. And uh, the first thing we wanted to do is really talk about a mission statement. And there's nothing like a mission statement to focus the direction of rowing, if you will. So our mission statement, and we've sort of pulled out some of the key words here, but it's really about cultivating the relationships and identifying um, school leaders, community leaders, business leaders, and starting to form some partnerships um, around the student, the student learning opportunities. Um, we certainly talked about career exploration, um, students understanding the business culture, community responsibilities, how to be a citizen of the world. Um, really, that's really part of the, this mission statement. And we also fundamentally realize that everybody has to benefit from the partnership. The student has to benefit, the schools have to benefit, and really the business or community partner has to benefit. And it all adds up to both a great experience for the students, but also it's part of really the future of our economic development. Um, and so that was really important to folks like me involved in community development, um, involved with the business community. Um, these are all the types of things that um, really we have this great opportunity to talk about. But as we developed the mission statement, we also realized we wanted to have that vision for each of these areas. We wanted to talk about students, we wanted to talk about the business community, and we wanted to talk about schools. So from the student perspective, um, we, there was a lot of discussion about students being able to graduate with a resume, and that's what some of these rich, rich resources were going to help with. They really wanted um, some discovery around career experiences. How do you determine what you want to be? Um, certainly there's the issue of uh, many of the jobs that uh, may exist in the future don't even exist now. So how do you begin to provide opportunities around that? We also wanted to talk about creating authentic community experiences. We wanted them to become citizens of the world, and we also, something very important to some of our business communities, community leaders, was having students really experience the culture of the working world. It's not just about facts and figures and been thinking, there's culture in each of the business communities. And then we also wanted to have them to have experience, again, beyond the classroom. For the schools, I think the community, the schools wanted to bring the community resources into the culture of education. Um, how do we bridge the gap? How do we speak the same language? We wanted to articulate um, all the things that the schools are really doing to prepare students. It's a different world out there, and there are many things that I think those of us who um, you know, grew up 10, 15, 20 years ago, we never thought about some of the activities that are in the schools now. And so I think that was part of the community education. And we certainly, schools wanted to attract talent to enrich the student experiences, and we wanted to develop and describe really access points for the student partner, for the partnerships. And then lastly, we did talk about 
what's the vision from the partnership side, from the business side? And part of that was advocating for and contributing to the um, educational excellence. By in being involved in the schools, being involved in student learning, it does present to the employees of businesses a really creative outlet for them. And many of the businesses talked about that, because that was important to them. Um, they also get a chance to articulate their core values and what the opportunities are for different industries. They are generating excitement for career exploration, community involvement, and learning. And then they also wanted to identify the opportunities um, that really uh, transcend both student businesses and the schools. And one of the fundamental pieces that we discovered was perhaps missing was this idea of an access point. And we're going to have Monique now talk about um, our discussions under infrastructure. How do you help a business understand where do you start in this process? How do you really become involved? Thank you, Karen. Thank you very much. Yes, one of the things we learned in talking to the businesses and to other organizations was that they really didn't know how to reach out to the schools. Do we talk to a teacher? Do we talk to the principal? Do we talk to central office? And in some cases, the teacher would send them to central office and central office would send them back to the school. So we had our own work to do in order to um, build a process. And a pro we developed a bit of a protocol and we're practicing that protocol on some developing partners uh, and partner projects. Uh, so we're also working on developing outreach as well, as well as managing potential partners and partnerships um, because we don't want to let them slide and those opportunities not be taken full advantage of. So as we develop these pieces, our focus is on the students. And so Karen spoke a little bit about the opportunity areas. One of the things in getting our own act together to encourage um, partnerships is what are the possibilities for outside organizations to become involved with the schools? So Karen talked a little bit about career exploration, workplace skills. It could be just merely curriculum enrichment in order to provide an authentic learning experiences for students. It could be service learning. There are many service organizations out there in the community and we want to provide students the opportunity to engage in service learning. But there's also community and life skill development for some of our students who just need to learn how to become a citizen within the community. So very often our students will come and visit Town Hall and get a tour of Town Hall and see how Town Hall works and sometimes it'll come into the schools and help show students. But we also want to communicate that it is about learning and so sharing those cross-disciplinary learning goals we have within the guiding principles also provides some direction to outside organizations, potential partners, what we're all about. And so we're looking for opportunities for our students to become communicators, continuous learners, creative problem solvers, contributors, and critical thinkers. And these are graduation requirements as well. So our developing projects that we're working on right now, we're working on a surfing and climbing student ambassador program at the middle school through salt, salt pump climbing. Um, <clears throat> and so that's a developing program where we're looking to engage some students in a project. There are also, as a graduation requirement, is a personal learning experience and part of the high school graduation requirement. One subset of that that we've been involved in is helping to support the high school internship course. But there'll be some other experiences that we'll be looking for potential partners to make sure that our students engage in a personal learning experience outside the walls of Scarborough High School. But we also serve a purpose of supporting ongoing projects that have been in place. A mentoring program that's developing at Wentworth School, those folks who are involved in promoting that mentor program came to the partnership meeting one day, talked about the mentorship program, and we're looking for potential partners. <laughs> we're also involved with the um, May Medical Center Research Institute, the student experience that uh, Judy Stanhope at the high school has been involved in. They are expanding that curriculum and offering it again this year. <laughs> And over time, the high school has been involved, both for seniors and I believe there may be some sophomore involvement in a financial literacy experience. As a result of these projects, one of the things that we have identified are that we have shared core values. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but it ranges from everything from, okay, let's be reasonable and set up projects that we can manage, all the way to, okay, how do we develop these mentoring programs? How do we develop these partnerships, but also sustain these partnerships with annual review and evaluation to be able to make the partnerships stronger and more applicable to our needs as well as the partnerships' needs? So I'd like to reach out and thank 
all of the participating businesses and organizations, but also in reaching out, um, invite people to become involved. They can certainly get in touch with either myself or Karen Martin. Uh, and we meet monthly. Uh, we work in small subgroups, but we also work as a whole group in sharing and updating each other on all the goings on and all the possibilities, both in the school and in the community. Both Karen and I like to entertain any questions if you have any questions. I have a couple questions. How many businesses are, are part of this um, partnership? I know there's 1,400 in town, but yeah. how many? There are about 40 folks on our mailing list, distribution list. Um, typically at our, what I would refer to as our regular participants, uh, range about 12 to 15 participants. Sometimes, for example, in August when we had our retreat, it was about 20 people. And so these are Scarborough business owners, employees of some sort. Mm -hmm. I'm, yes, yes, yes. They, they, they have been. I don't think that um, it's necessarily intended to be limited to just Scarborough uh, businesses. If somebody from um, a different um, area, different community really wanted to participate and they had a relationship or wanted to develop a relationship with the schools, I think there's no reason they couldn't. Because what came to mind in the meeting right before this, we had a finance meeting, and Kelly brought up the example that her son came home from school and asked um, his dad, can you come in and speak to our class about the way you use math in your job? Mm -hmm. He's a real estate agent, he's a contractor, building, how do you do angles, all that stuff. So I feel like there's this huge amount of resource that we have in our students, parents, guardians, mm -hmm. caregivers, that we also can tap into, but they may work in Westbrook or wherever. Absolutely, I think we're totally um, want to entertain that. And there, there actually has been someone who has a, who had a business. Uh, he lived in Scarborough, but had a business elsewhere. Um, and I think that there's a there's a great deal of, of opportunity there. And I think this group has been focused a lot on answering that very question: How does somebody get involved? And that's the that I think we've all identified, that's the crucial piece. It has to be easy, you have to know where to start. Um, and we have to make it smooth for, for folks. Otherwise we lose that interest that somebody may have. Right, and it, and it has to be not only simple for them, but it can't be overwhelming mm -hmm. for you. It can't, that can't right. become your job. <laughs> like, you know, if we open yeah. that, those floodgates, yes. it could be very overwhelming to have to weed through what what is relevant for the curriculum this year or the classroom this year. Absolutely, and I think one of the things we've been um, uh, cautious about um, is trying to stick to something that's manageable for some sample projects. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we didn't open it up and say, tell us all your, everybody's ideas. We wanted to get a couple of examples down, get sort of the contract, if you will, um, all the kinks worked out, um, and I also think that uh, our, we have visions down the road of having really some um, fairly unique infrastructure. In other words, maybe it's a, we have a website where someone can start here and the website could answer a lot of questions that I think now we're, we're doing with staffing and internally um, answering the questions. And so that's our long-term vision is to just have it really well organized so we take advantage of all of these resources that we know are out there. Right, and it, and it could be as easy as, and I'm sort of coming in at the 11th hour, but it could be as easy as um, allowing people to go to a, web, to a website, whatever that mm -hmm. is, to register exactly. as someone who's interested, like Jody Shea, I yep. do marketing, um, blah, 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 blah. So then you can pull from that database of mm. people to say, okay, we have a teacher who wants this kind of person. Search and then that's the exact exactly. the yeah. infrastructure part that Monique talked about. That's exactly what we're developing now and testing out with so some smart. of those partners that are going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Joanne just wanted to add one. I just wanted to add, uh, Jody, and what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. We do have a lot of people who come in to our school who volunteer through Junior Achievement and do uh, different programs where start the program is um, right now getting off the ground with K2. It hadn't been there before, but they are looking for volunteers. We have several 
teachers who are doing the program, which is a five-week uh, program with like, learning your community, and a person from the business community comes in and teaches that class to the kids. But uh, I know through um, six through eight, the does a junior achievement in a day, and all kids participate that and participate in that. And a job shadow day where they go to um, Sprague, they go to um, the Marriott, they go down to Key Bank to their financial KW. center, and so they're out there for eighth graders. And then at the high school, uh, John McHugh for the last five years has participated in a Titan Challenge, which is a statewide um, event with over. I think we had last year probably 1,800 kids, and it's a business model where they compete against each other from Bangor, Waterville, Portland, and um, Biddeford. Mm -hmm. So it's, there are um, a lot of parents and business people who are coming into the school and doing programs, and I know there's several in uh, Wetmore's also that participate in junior achievement. Donna? Just a comment, I just wanted to thank you both for your leadership in this whole uh, mm -hmm. effort. Um, I've sat on the committee with you now for over, well, last year and the year before, I was on the committee before you arrived, and I think you've just given a lot of structure to it. You really created a ladder, you know, and a way to look at this in a more organized fashion, so uh, thank you so much. I think, and what's interesting is just your both of you coming together, it's just symbolic of the school business piece, so it's, I mean, it just makes so much sense. So thanks. Mary? Well, I, I'm also really impressed with the whole model, and I think it has, you know, a lot of merit and just, you know, it's got a lot of promise. I just had a question as far as, is there a focus, too, just to really reach out to alumni of Scarborough? That's what I was going to say, too. To, no, you know, to really, to, you know, to show kids, okay, look, this is, this, this kid was, you know, where you were, and now mm -hmm. this is where they are, and I didn't know if that's, that's something that's a focus at all? or we, We've talked about alumni in a, in a variety of ways. It, yeah, I, we have not talked about alumni or taking on the project of tracking alumni. Mm -hmm. um, we're still working on building that infrastructure piece and that um, <coughs> potential database piece. Uh, but we're always brainstorming and have lots of ideas every, about every meeting, as Donna and Joanne and Julie can tell. There are, People come every time, they do a little bit of an update, and have you thought about, um, mm -hmm. usually comes up, um, that term. Uh, so we haven't, really haven't explored the tracking piece, but certainly alumni would be a group that we would reach out to as we begin to um, look for opportunities for our students. And do we have a way to do that? I'm just wondering, do, do we have a way? Yeah, it's, it's a phone or it's yeah. an email <laughs> at this point. Um, we don't have a website launched yet, but yeah. that's the piece that we're, we're looking to um, get going with. But, but district, specific but to Naviance, or really specific to alumni, we do have the capability through Naviance um, to be able to track alumni, but that is an area that Joanne and I actually just were having a conversation earlier about um, that is a, a, a huge growth opportunity for our district to really connect with our alumni in a more um, systematic way um, for a variety of reasons. Oh, oh, that could be my new gig. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? That's don't or carry anything fast? Actually, I do have a question. Um, are these projects focused more like school-wide, like grade-wise, or just in the classroom? Great question. The, um, it dep all depends. It depends on the partners who come forward in terms of what they can accommodate. Um, and we try, we encourage partners, potential partners, to start small so we can build from successes. Uh, but we're open to just about anything. There are, as Joanne described, lots of opportunities that go on. I know Hour of Code um, parents come in and do presentations and work with students, so there are lots of things that are already going on mm -hmm. in the schools as well, and we certainly don't want to be the bottleneck for that. Right. We just want to provide a better um, opportunity to engage. Mm -hmm. I, guess I would like to um, say that uh, I think it Mel melds really well with the new proficiency-based education um, shift that we've recently made and one of the conversations that I've had with people in the community who are concerned about the shift to PBE is that they're like, how are they gonna be motivated and how, it, mm -hmm. they, they, how if we're not doing class rank, how are they gonna get into law school? And, and I've pointed out to them that beyond law school, nobody's going to give you a grade for the work that you do and you're going to have to be able to know how to judge your own work and set your own goals. Mm -hmm. And so I think that this 
um, school business development is uh, another way of showing kids that model. Thank you. Yeah, I think this is great just to really solidify for people who are interested in volunteering and for the staff just to know, you know, how do we harness the resource of the community around us? Because I know it's not just limited to Scarborough. I went to some of the first meetings with the school business partnership and obviously UNE is not in Scarborough but very active in the group mm -hmm. and um, somebody from Chinbro was there that meeting and so I think um, it's definitely going to be much easier to manage going forward and I think thank you for thank you for your work I think it's going to make it smooth for everyone going forward You're welcome well, thank you does that conclude your report that does conclude my report okay well that takes us to the chair's report I don't really have anything so. just kidding you guys this is my last chance so I'm gonna hear all my thoughts <laughs> Settle in, <laughs> in yeah. tonight. No, seriously. Um, I just want to just let everybody know. I say it every time, but what a phenomenal organization Scarborough Schools are. Really, top down. Every person you encounter, just professional and respectful and eager to make the best choices for everybody. And. Um, I'm glad I had a chance to do it for six years and to be a part of it. Um, I think we've made some improvements and I wish we could do more, but it's time for me to take a back seat. Um, when I started Cormac was in kindergarten and the girls were in fourth grade and now they are sixth and tenth grade. Mm -hmm. So it's time to be in my family again. They're not sure what they're going to do with all my time there, but. <laughs> Coming back, get ready. <laughs> Thursdays, your free time's over, um, <laughs> and all the other days of the week. And that's the thing. That's the that's the, the hidden secret of the school board is all the time it takes. So, um, I couldn't go cold turkey. I'm keeping some committees, so I still have a have a. I'll be around, guys. Don't miss me <laughs> too much. You know my phone number. Um, but I'm sure that the new members coming in will be able to jump right in and make contributions right out of the gate, very positive of that, um, and continue the good work being done. And it's been an honor. So thank, thank you. you. And we're going to move on <laughs> somebody else who can talk now. <laughs> well, let's do finance. Come on, Jody. <laughs> wow us. Wow you with finance. So um, the finance committee met just before this meeting, and we went over the first quarter of 2018, which is shocking because I think the last meeting we did the final of 2017. So um, the budget is always working. Julie always says that we're we're always reviewing last year, sort of developing this year, and, and looking towards the future. So it's never ending. Um, we have met as a full school board and a full town council about a month ago, maybe three weeks ago, to talk about communication for the budget and ideas that. Um, ideas and ways that we can bring more people engaged in the budget process and um, help the general public to understand the budget and all that it encompasses, um, not only the school side, but also the municipality side. So we met, I think it was October 19th we decided, and came up with some great ideas and we'll sort of touch base one final time again with the town council and the town manager to get any last um, ideas there and then work towards improving um, the foundation that we've already set up in the last two to three years. We've always met as a joint town council and school board finance committee, but we feel like there may be ways to to build upon that and um, it could be as simple as um, changing times of meetings or formats of meetings. We found that this format could be intimidating to the general public to have to get up and speak and then we don't get to respond. Like it, it doesn't help with the discussion. So maybe there's a different way to go about that. And I think everyone at that meeting was very open to sort of massaging the way we currently do things to make it um, more user friendly to the general public. So um, I think that will be an ongoing conversation over the next couple months um, as we gear up for more budget discussions to start for 2019. And then we, um, so the review of the first quarter financials 
was just sort of a draft for us to, to ask questions to Kate Bolton, and she will post um, all of this information. We had a couple of questions that she needed to go back to, and before she sends it out to the full board and posts it on the um, website, she will make those adjustments and then let us know that it's up for everybody. Donna? Um, well, the school business partnership, you just heard from them, so I don't think you need anything from me. Policy, um, we have requested some information from Drum Drummond Woodsum on a few different policies just to hear what they, what they have to say about a number of things. Um, we did question the issue of medical mar marijuana in the schools. And also we touched briefly on the um, need for a policy on the business partnership. We need to be able to make sure we all understand, you know, what what's going to happen there on both sides, mm -hmm. business and school, and mm -hmm. so whether or not we may need to write a policy on that. Um, we touched briefly on the topic of cell phone use, and um, I was at the um, the state conference last week, and in one of the sessions that I sat in with some lawyers from Drummond Whitsum, they were talking about the changes that schools are starting to discuss around the state um, due to the increase in bullying that's going on due to social media. And so schools are beginning to talk about what to do about cell phone usage. Um, interestingly enough, today I found an article in this week's Time Magazine, the latest copy, and it was all about this topic mm -hmm. and some things that are happening around. So I've made copies for all of you so that you can read it. And, you know, just to, because I don't know what we're going to do about mm -hmm. this, but um, just to have some background so that all of you are on board and begin to think about and maybe search for more information on the topic should we decide to look into and, and, and uh, you know well we'll go from there so that's it okay Carrie um, the communications committee uh, put out our fall newsletter um, last month and uh, currently I feel like the communications committee and the finance committee are really kind of um, meshing quite a lot in addition to the, <laughs> the fact that two of us are on both committees. Um, I think that a lot of our talk right now is about how to begin talking about the next budget season mm -hmm. and using the lessons that we've learned from the past and uh, different ways that that can look and feel. So um, that's where we are right now and we have yet to schedule our next meeting but we will do that soon. Um, just before we get to the student report, um, yeah, that's what I was just going to okay. say. I want someone. Um, I know Mary and Donna. You are both there both days. If you want to give us kind of like a quick summary of how the MSMA conference was last week, it's like some of maybe just touch on some of the workshops you went to. Or I I went to um, a legislative advocacy workshop, which was really helpful. Just talking about um, how we can work with our legislators to you know help our education funding and help build relationships. And they talked about you know, really building a relationship with our legislators so, you know, we can be on the same page and then if we need to ask for, um, you know, when there's bills that would affect us, you know, mm -hmm. how we can um, work with them. I also went to uh, developing a media strategy, uh, which was run by the Kenny Bunk Schools, which had some good information about mm -hmm. really, so I definitely want to talk about that in, in communications, um, just talking about really trying to hit on all fronts you know, to get that information out and um, ways to work with the, with the community. Um, and then I also, let's see, I also did one on, um, oh, on um, collective bargaining. So I'm so just talking about that. So, so. And you were the delegate too, so what were the issues mm -hmm. that so you issues, voted on? The issues mm -hmm. on that side, there were some about, I'm trying to think, um, as far as that, I know there was there was a, as far as the that they wanted to make sure of the regionalization that they weren't really in favor of regionalization mm -hmm. and that that should just be something that's kind of more voluntary and not that they're penalized. Yeah. That was a, that was a big deal. Okay. Um, on that. And Donna. So I spent the day and a half in all legal workshops. Mm -hmm. So almost everything. Taking the, taking the torch, Donna. I, <laughs> I just, I just, they, they're so valuable because it's a real chance for us to be with the drummer with some lawyers and 
just learned so much more from them. So I did a lot on negotiations and just uh, the legal impacts on so many different aspects of school, in school. So it w I found it very, very helpful to go to those. So. Yeah, I think I've always found that the MSMA workshops to be really good, almost better than when we went to the national one when it was in Boston. Oh, really? Those were good, but they're not specific to what we deal with. Yeah. You know, it was topics that are much more right. broad. So I like going to hearing from, you know, the communities that surround us and even far away in Aroostook County, the issues that they're dealing with and how they're doing it differently. But thank you. The student report. Okay. Um, so in the high school, PSATs were earlier this month. That was quite a long day. Uh, I think they went well. <laughs> I just heard a lot of complaining afterwards, but that's to be expected. Um, I know last week the math team had their first meet over right at our high school. Singing in the Rain starts tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I think today's like their last night of rehearsals. Uh, Parent-teacher conferences were last week. And the volleyball team won state championships last week. Yes. That was pretty good. At the middle school earlier this month, the bike walk parades uh, happened, except that it was quite rainy. Mm -hmm. I was right out on uh, an old orchard handing out snacks, so <laughs> well, it was lovely packing. cleaning up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they have not said how much they've raised yet, but I'm going to find out eventually. Uh, the flu clinic has started to go through Scarborough schools. They went through the high school. I think last week it was at the high school, and next week it should be at the middle school. Unity Day happened on the 28th at the middle school. It was a pep rally to embrace kindness, acceptance, and inclusion, and it was to fight bullying in the schools. They were all asked to wear orange to represent unity. In Wentworth, they had a meteorologist come, and the students had to be at school at 6 in the morning. Uh, I would not want to do that for a <laughs> little bit early for me, but it was really cool for students to have their five minutes of fame and be part of the broadcast. Mm -hmm. And in the primary schools, the book fairs started to make its way through the district, and that's mm -hmm. all for me. Okay, Kelly. Want, yeah, well, I was just going to say one thing about the soccer team. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Okay, go. You take it, Jody. Take it. I was just going to say that the girls' soccer team plays for the state championship on Saturday. It was originally somewhere else, but it has been moved to Deering High School at 1230. Yeah. So it's really convenient. And Very football, so convenient. Football's tomorrow night, right? Football's, football's, football's tomorrow, tomorrow night. night. Home. 7 o'clock. Yeah. Is that, what is that? Is that quarter? Or like, what, where um, is it on the it's a playoff game, but they had to buy the first oh, round. Oh, okay. So. Kind of early in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. look at that. Weather. Thanks, Dylan. Oh, there's the weather. Can I introduce rec oh. recognition? <laughs> okay. So then, um, 10.0 recognition. So I have four points to recognize tonight. Um, the first one, uh, the first two Dylan made mention of. So yes, we did have WMTW Channel 8 at Wentworth School. Um, so here's some videos. You can see the students out there in the dark. As Dylan mentioned, it was nice and early. And they also got a chance to go in the news van. And there's a little clip here that Kelly will share with us. How did if, was it a particular class, or could just whoever was going to be awake could tell anyone? anyone. It, was, um, it was based on uh, those who could get there, because okay. transportation wasn't right. provided. Obviously. So um, okay. Kelly's going to turn up the volume so we can hear it, and then we'll play that quick video clip. I think it was advertised for anyone who was studying weather at the time. I see. Yeah. Maybe a particular grade. Yeah. I think it was Some mostly classes. fourth grade. Makes sense. Was your sister there, Dylan? She's in seventh grade. Oh, she's in seventh grade. Jeez. Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> Edit that. We're <laughs> <laughs> school in Scarborough. Lucky enough to chat with over 150 fourth graders who are very interested in weather. They actually have their own weather station here at the school so that they can monitor their weather, make sure they can get out for recess. Although with these wet days ahead, it might be a little bit questionable. Lots of questions, of course, about extreme weather. And the students who joined us at the bus stop this morning <laughs> really wanted to know about heavy rains, flooding, as well as hurricanes. So plenty of topics covered today. If you would like us to come to your school, make sure you fill out the request form at w WMTW.com. In Scarborough, I'm WMTW meteorologist Mallory Brooke. 
I, I wish Principal Crosby was here because she could t share with us the questions the students were asking of the camera crew and the weather men and women. Um, they were really good, sophisticated questions. I'm not remembering them off the top of my head, but that was an exciting event. There's another picture for you. Look at that beautiful sky. Enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> Their moment of fame. And then also, as Dylan mentioned, the middle school bike and walkathon. Uh, this year is the last year that it will be a split, or it will, that the donations will go to um, the AIDS Foundation that's right here in Portland. This year they decided to split the, um, the money that was raised. And so I believe that to date, the numbers, the money is still rolling in, and so we don't have an accurate number, but it's up to at least $6,000. So the other half of the money that was raised will go to support one of our Scarborough alums' school um, in, in Houston, in Hamburg, um, in Hamburg, rather, in Texas, who suffered um, the impact of Hurricane Harvey. So um, the other thing, this is Tom Griffin and I there on that rainy morning. I did not walk, so this is kind of a little, you know, false advertising for me. But I was there um, to see all of the families who came out, and it was a little disappointing because they weren't able to bike yeah. due to the weather. Um, but the kids and the parents still did walk, and um, it was a great community e event. And this has been, this was the 31st year, I believe. Um, I believe this is the 31st year, yeah, Colby's given me the thumbs up. Colby was there, um, and so they have raised over $150,000 for the Franny Peabody House in Portland, and again, like I said, this year it was 6000 split between both that organization and supporting students um, in the Hamburg Middle School. So we're so proud of all of our students. I think um, another Another proud point that our community should really be aware of is how involved our students are and how engaged they are not only in their local community but as global citizens. Um, and that's something that we strive toward in our long-term improvement plan. So um, thank you to all the students and the parents who made it happen. Um, this and many other great opportunities. So the next point of recognition is that our very own Assistant Superintendent, Joanne Sizemore, was named Assistant Superintendent of the Year. So um, these photos are me being the proud mama for Joanne <laughs> at the MSMA conference. Um, really is amazing to have, to be able to, as a new superintendent, have an experienced expert administrator like Joanne to work alongside each and every day. She is um, both my professional coach and my life coach, so um, I just so enjoy the opportunity to be able to work with you. And I'm still learning about how amazing she is. There's all these little stories that sneak out every once in a while. Um, but we also want to thank Allison Marchese, our Director of Special Services, for nominating Joanne because we all believe that she is so very deserving of this honor. Um, and I didn't know if Monique or Kelly wanted to add to um, the, the many accolades that Joanne deserves. Well, I think it's pretty good that last year she had practice. She won a chair. <laughs> <laughs> An SMA like this. Yeah. Like these chairs, but it doesn't match any of our chairs. She just won it, and instead it's of a prize. Ticket, it was literally they handed her the chair to <laughs> take out. She, we left with the chair. <laughs> so she has experience receiving awards there, major yeah. awards. <laughs> so this is... <laughs> will fit in your office better and it's yeah. very special. Yeah. But to add to that, those who don't know, she also received in 2006 middle school um, principal, mm -hmm. principal of the year That's from right. the same association. So, so we now, um, we're doing a little office redesign for the trophy case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I am very honored, and, uh, but I also realize that in my 40 years of education, that it's the group of people that I have worked with that have helped me succeed because without a team of people, it, you know, you can't do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, it's amazing how hard people work in education and how devoted they are to public education and to helping students. And people are committed. And so that has inspired me along my career. And there are, mm -hmm. you know, a couple teachers, uh, I said to them, you inspire me today, you know. Mm -hmm. um, because there's going to be a future, absolutely. Talk a little bit about all the positions you've held since you were a substitute teacher yeah. here. Oh, Tell us all the things. <laughs> I've been a substitute teacher. No. A coach. Well, I was moving back to Maine, and a friend of mine who was a math teacher 
in Scarborough said there's a job. I said, okay, I went to apply. They told me the job was filled already, but I was getting married in four days, so I said, wait a minute, I don't have time to do all this. I heard there's a job. I, I ended up getting the long-term sub, then the next year I became the math teacher, and I think it was like seven years I became the lead teacher, and from the lead teacher mm -hmm. I went to principal, which I stayed for 19 years. And then while you were teaching? While I was teaching too. That's right, I did that. I was teaching and principal. I forgot that. That's right. That's right. Your <laughs> classroom was across from the office. office. That's so right. you could run to the office, office real quick and make a call and we would be really good. <laughs> and then you come back. Yeah. And then I up to assistant superintendent and I did an interim of superintendent and I'm very content and happy with the assistant superintendent. So. I keep trying to switch with her, but. <laughs> They're awesome. <laughs> Beautiful. Yay. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Congratulations. If Jackie were here, she would make you watch the line. I always feel like we should do it anyway, but we'll tell Jackie. <laughs> Mm -hmm. in our places. All right, and the final recognition for tonight is to once again recognize Kelly Murphy for being our school board chair for the last year. I don't know if you've done yeah. that before. No. <laughs> it's about all I could handle. I like one and done. <laughs> and also for giving so much of her time, passion, and energy to our school district, um, but also our community at large. You are truly an amazing person. And um, I know that as I'm still learning things about you, I am completely astonished by your passion and your dedication to serving all kids, all families in our community, and it goes beyond the endless hours you put in for the school board. So thank you for that. Um, we're so proud of you, and we know you're not going that far. So um, we're not really saying goodbye. We're just saying thank you to you mm -hmm. today. And I asked um, Joanne if she could also say a few words about your service. Yes. Because I've known Kelly for over 30 years. Wow. And um, I was her math teacher. <laughs> and um, I remember. I did join the finance committee at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was her math teacher. And we were studying about the stock market back then and learning how to analyze the stock, how it went up, track it through graphs. And mm -hmm. we didn't have a lot of the modern stuff to do that. We had to do the <laughs> fractions. By hand, and all that. <laughs> we had to write letters to, to right. get annual reports. You had to write letters because I incorporated all of that. Write the letter, a business letter to the company to get their annual report, so that you can read it and then you can analyze some of the stuff in there to see if it matches what the paper is giving That's you. A big deal. It was a good. Uh, I, I was pretty proud of my project. <laughs> but we did know that we had a uh, Mr. Murphy come in. And after, I don't know if he came in for your class, but we had a Mr. Murphy, Rick Murphy, yeah. who would come in and Uncle talk Mom. about, yep, <laughs> not knowing that you not were going to be a Murphy. I didn't know that then. <laughs> and the one thing that well, we missed out on, Kelly, mm -hmm. is that we didn't buy Disney. I know. If you and I had bought Disney <laughs> what I thought? 30 years ago, <laughs> just think where we could be today. We didn't do that. We were not risk takers. We, <laughs> we, we were not risk takers, because I didn't do it either. But then years passed, and I met Kelly again when she came forward for the Wentworth Building Committee. And I have to say, Kelly was truly uh, dedicated to getting out there, to advocating for that new school, and uh, took on many projects such as the Interior Committee, the Quote Committee, um, the uh, Bricks, the in, uh, Color Design, and um, wanted the school to be alive, and also the art project. So um, it was really nice to reconnect with you and see how dedicated you are to helping the kids of Scarborough, along with all her work she does for the backpack program mm -hmm. and making sure kids have food at all times. So, Kelly, you're truly amazing mm -hmm. for the work you've done. Mm -hmm. And we're not done with you. Stop it! Yeah. <laughs> we have an executive session? Come on up here. <laughs> Come on. 
you want me to go first? Yeah. All right, so I wrote it down because I wasn't sure I was going to get through it. So <laughs> um, Kelly convinced me probably four and a half or five years ago to run for school board. Uh, now there's probably a joke in there somewhere, but I, I do thank you for that because it has been um, an incredible, rewarding experience for me. Um, there have been stressful times and not always all um, joyful, but it really has been um, the most rewarding um, time of my life. So I thank you for that. Your dedication to this town and to the children of this town is unmatched. Um, Thankfully, she promises not to go very far, so we will see her around and we'll reap the benefits um, of your enthusiasm. A couple of, ex of examples of areas in town that Kelly contributes are the backpack program. She literally will come to your house and pick up food um, if you can't make it to her house, her bin at her house, which stays there all year long to collect food. Um, she will bring it to Wentworth for you. Pretty much you just have to provide the food and she will get it to um, the backpack program. She volunteers at St. Max. She volunteers um, for Project Grace. She volunteers for just about anything. If you asked her to volunteer, she would say yes. I um, started a fundraiser for the primary PTA probably six years ago called Race to the Point. Her kids had gone through the primary school, yet every year she would volunteer all day long in the cold at Race to the Point, even when her kids were long gone and not um, in the school. So um, she coaches at community services when they were a part of community services. So you're a hard act to follow, um, and the list goes on and on and on, but we are so thrilled to have had our chance with you. And so those are some of the quiet things that she does with not a lot of fanfare, but there's one project that she did that there's no doubt she was very loud about. <laughs> um, as Joanne said, she, she, her dedication to, to creating the new Wentworth was amazing. And her dedication, there was no saying no to her. If she ever asked for help with getting the word out or um, just standing out front holding signs, I went through a lot of pictures over the last week of little mini of our kids, they're tiny, out there holding these big giant signs. And um, she was instrumental in getting that school passed. So we are forever in debt um, to you for that. We are sad to see you go, but we are very excited for Jack and Fiona and Killian and Cormac to have you back at night. Um, but we know we will see you around. So thank you so much for all that you've done. So you've already been given a lot of accolades here. <laughs> Obviously, you've done an amazing job in your six years here. You brought me on board too, I, Carrie. I don't know whether she brought you on too or not, but um, yeah. One thing about Kelly, you know, is that when she sets her mind to something she wants done, she's not letting that go until it is done. And so go ahead and open uh, uh, the school board's gift to you, although it's, all these are your gifts. So one thing that she repeatedly had to answer to the public for was, why does the Wentworth School have to have hanging glass fish in the lobby? And she answered that she answered that question over and over again, and so there you go. It made so much sense to, for you to have that photo. <laughs> Thank you. No, so thanks you. Thank you for all you. I do love that building. I don't have any kids there anymore. <laughs> but in the last two days, I've been there two days in a row for meetings. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? What a community space that is. <laughs> Whoever designed that building was really thinking about all the ways to use it. Um, and also, I um, just want to plug real quick, the backpacks really need food right now, for real. Um, okay. For the Thanksgiving break, the shelves are empty. So you can reach out to me. You can 
drop stuff at the real estate store. I also have a bin there now, my husband's office. <laughs> so anywhere you can drop off food, I'll pick it up, and you can bring it to me, and I'll get it where it needs to go. Um, but you guys, thank you so much. It's been fun, and I say it all the time, like, I feel like I'm retiring from a job, and I'm not going to see my friends anymore. But <laughs> that's why I had to keep some committees. <laughs> I was telling Jack about... Um, I said, well, you know, I'll have so much more free time. And then I started to list the committees I was staying with. And he's like, that doesn't sound like it's a lot of free time. But it is it is cutting back. It does take a lot of time. And um, I said this when I announced my retirement, that it was six years thinking about 3,000 kids. And now I'm back to thinking about the three and the 3,000, still being the back of my mind. <laughs> um, so thank you guys so much. Um, it's really special. I love my new artwork. We have pretty much bare walls in our house because we moved while I was still on the school board. So now we can, <laughs> we can decorate like a school motif. It's probably going to be it. So thank you <laughs> again <laughs> so much. I've loved it. It's been an honor, and I will miss it. So. All right, so you do have thank to come you. down the line. Well, and I want to I take a, just a second, and I know for sure if Jackie was here, she would not let the moment pass, okay, but go. I'm yeah. saying a few words. Um, and I'm lucky enough to still get to see Kelly at work every day. That's true. Um, and I, I had to write it down because I wasn't sure what emotional state I would be in either. Um, and I just, I, every town should be so lucky as to have a Kelly Murphy or two <laughs> mm -hmm. um, to grow up here and to come back and settle down and raise your kids here and make Scarborough a better place. Um, and it's not just your own kids you care about, obviously. I was also t thinking about the deck furniture that is dedicated to the backpack program. I, I would fill that thing with whatever, but it's there for the um, kids of Scarborough. And I also wanted to mention the um, community Thanksgiving that Kelly was mm -hmm. pretty much um, single-handedly in charge of pulling together last year. And November 23rd, together. 11 to 1 at Wentworth School cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> And also that she isn't afraid to confront tough issues, and I have rarely seen anyone stand so strong and create courageously in their beliefs. You're a role model, you're an amazing citizen, and a great friend, and we'll miss you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. but now we're going to get to the next highlight, which is meeting minutes of October 5th, 2017. I have a motion. Move, move approval is printed. Second. Second. Any questions, comments, or changes? All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. 11.2, meeting minutes of October 19th, 2017. Move approval is printed. Second. Second. Any changes to this one? All in favor? All right. It's also unanimous. Thank you. 12.0 appointments, 12.1 high school lead teacher. All right, hold on. For I don't know where my little list is. All right, so my recommendation is to appoint the positions as presented below. 12.1 uh, high school lead teacher, 12.2 high school winter coaches, 12.3 middle school athletic liaison, and 12.4 middle school co-curricular. Want to take them all together? So moved. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? Just to clarify, the 12.2 is middle school winter coaches, not high school. Oh, did I say high school? The updated one that's here says middle. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. That takes us to 13.0. Um, adjournment. Before we adjourn, I just have one last thing. Mm -hmm. um, we're all going to go over and have a drink and, and toast you and celebrate and thank you for your time. So I just wanted to sort of put it out there that there will probably be more than three school board members there, but there will be no school board business being discussed. 
I'm out of the business. <laughs> <laughs> can't talk about it with me anymore. To celebrate <laughs> Kelly. So I wanted to put that out there that we will be over at O'Reilly's after this. Okay, that's fine. Right. We adjourn. Adjourning. Oh. We have a motion. I move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? We are adjourned. <laughs>